1996, Will Smith punched an alien in the face and dragged him here, Area 51. Today, I, Jermaine Lucier from SlashFilm.com, won't be punching any aliens here at Area 51, just learning about them as I interview Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and Greg Matola about their new movie, Paul. Go. We're ready? Is yeah. That it? Well, congratulations on the movie, guys. Thank you. I thought Thank it was really awesome. Thank you. Uh, you guys sort of made it for me, though. I mean, it's sort of one of those movies, you know, when you work for a movie website. And right, right, yeah. Where yeah. I was just laughing the entire time at oh, every cool. single reference. Um, Good. What did you guys think of uh, when you first found out you're going to be doing interviews here at the Little Alien Inn where you guys were on your way? We thought, why can't we get a chopper out here? It's <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this whole Area 51 thing on it. It's, it's the no-fly zone. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah. This, I can honestly say, seeing the Beagle again after uh, a year, I felt a, a huge sense of nostalgia. We had a great time in the summer of 09 filming this movie. Made some great friends and, and spent a lot of time in that thing. Yeah, we, we did. In various guises. So it's nice to be back. And but back out at the Little Alien as well, where we kind of started our journey. Really. Yeah, yeah. And it's and nice to see Pat. You know, there is a Pat in the film. The real Pat. And yeah. Little Alien. And that is because of Pat and the Little Alien, you know. So it felt like I'm coming to meet an old friend again, you know. Right. This has been a really cool experience. I've seen the movie come here and talk to you guys. But, yeah. um, so everybody's always ta asking you guys about the you know the Cornetta trilogy. When's the third one coming out? All this bull bull bullshit. I guess we can curse on this. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're so saying. Internet, you can Whatever. Do well, here's my here's my thing though. Paul sort of is a third ver is like a third one, right? You sort of you take a genre, sci-fi, sort of put a spin on it. It's full of references. I mean, I guess. Well, I think our our kind of mo is that we like to make the films we want to watch. So we never look at it like oh let's do this genre we just we have a number of likes and passions and 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 zombie movies and science fiction and action films just happen to be in there it's not we don't really approach it from a point of view of genre more of like what we would like to see yeah. and um it's not a, it's not the third one in that because that's very much about edgar and yeah. we, we specifically you know because edgar was doing scott pilgrim and this has always been very much mine and my wife nick's idea good morning um <laughs> we kind of needed someone who could give it a different feel than Edgar. Edgar's direction is like, is almost like a character in itself. Yeah. You know, when you watch an Edgar Wright movie, you know it's an Edgar Wright movie. Whereas we needed Greg's sort of subtlety and restraint to create something that felt more like, more like his first movie, Day Trippers, but with something like Gollum in it. You know, that yeah. was the kind of, our remit initially was like, let's make a really sort of like, you know, sort of talky, improvised feeling kind of indie road movie, but have this extraordinary special effect in it. You yeah. know, which would offset both uh, angles. Yeah. No, that was awesome. Um, you guys, uh, early in the movie, you guys meet this uh, Adam's Shadow Child character, right? And uh, the meeting is particularly awkward and weird, and, you know, it's sort of like the way I'm speaking now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, did you guys, did that happen to you guys a lot, you know, where people come up to you and say you're big fans of space and this and that? Did you draw that on experience? Or? Little. But I think well, I'd like to think we're slightly nicer than Adam Shadowchild. <laughs> we, we've seen yeah. people at signings that do behave like him, and we always think, "Should we name and shame?" I, yeah, yeah. Go on then. We went. We did a signing years and years ago at this Wembley Con thing. And, you know, there was a big long table of people, and next to us was Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed, <laughs> oh. and he was charging twenty-five pound, like forty dollars for a ten by eight. And as soon as the people came, he wouldn't stand and pose for photographs. And as soon as they turned away, he literally went <laughs> and, and did his hands. He said, God, these people are paying $40 just to buy a photo. And the least you can do is smile. smile and, and maybe, maybe he was having a bad day. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 but we, we kind of, whenever we've done that kind of thing of, of, you know, as invariably has been the case, we always try and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a moment. I'd done it. I, I lined up to meet Carrie Fisher and like, you know, had like five seconds with her that meant the world to me because she, she was my first love and I got to tell her that I kissed her picture when I went to bed and, you know, and for me that interface was, was everything. For her, it's just like, you've got to get through a big line of people, but so you've got to make it kind of personal. We've never really met anybody like Adam Shadowchild. He's probably the most unrealistic character in the <laughs> film compared to Paul, you know, but we needed a, we needed a, a sort of, there's a great kind of faux documentary on the on the DVD Blu-ray release called Who is Adam Shadow Child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And it's like his, his story. <laughs> and, and Jeffrey Tambor was just so funny. There's, there, there's a, a reams of stuff he yeah. did that's not in the movie, you know. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, that awesome. was one of the, you know, one of those things that as, a, as actors and writers, you just sit on uh, the side of the stage and watch Jeffrey Tambor work. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you do it all day. It's, yeah. it's fabulous. And he's got a connection with Carl Weathers. They were both on Arrested Development. Of course, yeah. You know? And as was Jason. As <laughs> yes. I'm sure Greg probably directed yeah, Carl yeah, Weathers yeah. at some point. Uh, in the movie, we find out Paul uh, is responsible for so many things uh, throughout pop culture. Uh, is there anything without, uh, that you that he's responsible for that's not in the movie? 
basically everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was just a way for us to retroactively yeah, to <laughs> rip off everything. We like the idea that, that, that a lot of what you see in Paul, you kind of feel like it's familiar. And yeah. The idea is that Paul probably started watching science fiction in the 40s and thought, wait, this is terrible, and started <laughs> wanting to get in on this it. This is and right. He yeah. started advising people, and so when you know they heard, he heard this young buck was going to make a film called Close Encounters, he got straight in there and started g advising. And so stuff like you know even even Mr Miyagi's uh, yeah. healing yeah, yeah. you know is I think kind Paul of probably wrote some scripts as well and sent them in with like a, a stage name and stuff and they liked his script so much they kind of contacted him and and that's how the uh, that's how Howard uh, the Duck was made yeah, <laughs> that's how the relationship was formed uh, you just mentioned uh, Close Encounters um, you know hopefully people well everybody who reads our site is going to see this movie so I don't yeah. so you can talk a little bit of spoilers maybe you don't like to give away too much but there's yeah. a Really great voice cameo in this movie. Yes, that just kills. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys work that out? Did it ha would it work because of uh, a movie that you both are in that's coming out? Did that sort of help out? Uh, it helped a lot. Yeah. It did help Absolutely. a lot. Yeah. It, 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 in fact, it, the it, the the person whose voice it is was uh, actually suggested it in the first place because oh, wow. uh, we were working in close quarters with said individual and and told him about the film and he kind of ran with the idea and liked it and said well, maybe I can like call up like I'm like I might call Paul or something <laughs> we were like uh, okay yeah so that wasn't in the script that was something that, that yeah we went off happened. we, we yeah. went off and wrote that scene and kind of we figured it might have to be a flashback because it would be you know it, it, it would we could thematically link it in with the way that Paul has worked over the years we didn't want to push our luck and ask him to be on camera so yeah, we yeah. Were, just kind of <laughs> and we also love the idea of him literally got. phoning in a cameo <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool um clive makes a great joke about you know getting uh battle star spoiled by graham yeah um do you guys think of any instances where you know the internet sort of spoils something for you that you were really looking forward to it's so hard to look at the net now without you know this whole spoiler culture is kind yeah of, you've got to be careful i think i think trailers as well oh, yeah. give a lot of spoilers away i mean because obviously it's a marketing based machine now so you have to give a certain amount of way so you know i think showing gandalf alive in the second lord of the rings movie in the trailer what i couldn't I that was one of the things i kind of screamed in the cinema no you idiot <laughs> i think it's it, you know the perfect reading of paul the perfect viewing of paul rather would be for you to walk into the cinema not knowing anything about it so that when Paul appears for the first time, you are as shocked as Graham and Clyde. Yeah. You think this is a movie about two kind of weirdos on a trip. Suddenly this happens. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think if you are a, a lover of movies, it's probably good to discipline yourself into not viewing any pre-publicity at all. So yeah. you can enjoy the surprises of the movie. Don't read reviews. Don't see um, spoiler trailers. You know, don't read stuff. Just... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, as someone, who's, who, someone who, uh, who purchased the bride sword at Comic Con myself, wow! Uh, when you guys, uh, you know, when you get the, con you know, that sword, I really related to it. Uh, do you guys, do you have anything like you splurged on like that in real life, like a cool collectible? I bought a, um, a customized Darth Vader helmet, one of the Vader Project helmets that they did for the 30th anniversary of Star Wars. Oh yeah. Which I have in my, um, in my play, in my man cave. You bought me something quite like that, didn't you? What did I get you? What? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a shop near me who was actually in a uh, legal dispute with George Lucas about who owned the original casts to the Stormtrooper outfits. This guy made the models, so he owned the models, and and uh, he sells complete Stormtrooper outfits. So I bought Simon a, uh, a a proper Stormtrooper's helmet a few years ago. That kind of thing, you know, when we were 21, it was like, oh, imagine we had like Stormtrooper outfits and stuff. <laughs> now there's a place. 500 meters from my house that you could buy a full a one. full Stormtrooper outfit. And I guess this is probably going to be the last thing. Um, are you guys excited about Phantom Menace coming out in 3D? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'd like actually being in the car crash with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the movie. Thank you so much for speaking with us. This is awesome. Our pleasure. Thank and, you. Uh, Have a good day. Are you rushing you back? Too. Are you hanging out for a bit? We're hanging out. Oh, oh good. See you for an alien burger. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.